Yes, everybody, welcome to another episode of The Warm Down. We thought we'd do a live one today because Laurie was with us. So uh, we thought we'd make it a Q&A because there's loads to talk about. And we thought, do you know what, rather than just us deciding, why don't you lot decide? Mm. Um, so what was you saying? Got loads going on this week. What did you do with Ollie today? Yeah, so Ollie press conference this morning. He was in good spirits, actually. Um, it's not what you just said a minute ago. <laughs> off camera for off camera, Steve. You get the good stuff. Um yeah, no, he was talking about um, what Pogba. Get me closer. Sorry, but oh, obviously uh, Pogba um, back on the grass with physios, uh, back training uh, with the first team next week. But then again, we'll see how long that will take him to get back. Actually, Matt Sharpness, he's been out for such a long time. Mm. I don't know, have any necessary uh, faith that he'll be uh, back anytime soon. Um, yeah, and he, he sort of reflected a little bit on um, on Liverpool going out of the FA Cup, uh, no, no sniggering, um, and just sort of saying, obviously, that it, it just highlights again how difficult it was doing the treble, obviously, which he was a part of. It was good. He was, he was in decent spirits. Why is Klopp um, rotating in the FA Cup? I guess he just thinks um, Champions League is a huge prize. Premier League still not quite. Oh, come so, on. I don't, yeah, you I, could play I, yeah, me and yeah, you centre-half yeah, yeah. and we'd probably get a game <laughs> won between us at one point. <laughs> a, I mean, how many points do you need to... I mean, all right, like to make it mathematical, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in realistic terms, yeah. it's it's won. It's, it's won like, yeah, yeah. everyone chasing is a little bit iffy. It's it's won, Jürgen. Stop fucking about. <laughs> <sighs> I, do, I, I think he's obviously thinking that, if, you know, he's, he's, he's rotated it... Th- you know, in previous rounds, um, the, I guess he thought he had enough to go through. But at the same time, you know, maybe he just thinks Champions League is the one that he wants to win again. Um, and obviously, they've got a massive tie to turn that around again. Athlet- I mean, I, I'm not a bookie, obviously, but I wonder what the odds are now for them. You see this so often when teams smoke the league dead mm. early. They don't really generally do well in, in Europe after that. I don't know if it's something about being able to, like, concentrate and then not concentrate. Yeah. I think they struggle to, to like... I just focus. I think it well benefits you more when you just like every game's a killer. Every game we've yeah. got, to, we've got to do it. And I wonder yeah. if it's going to show them up a little bit by the end of the season. Match them up next week. Well, well that is the, the sort of jeopardy that we were talking about with Solskjaer, where obviously you know United were in those three competitions. Everything meant so much, and they went on that unbeaten run in all comps of like thirty three games, didn't they? So, which stands the test of time when you compare it to either you know the Invincibles or whoever else that have gone on lead long unbeaten mm. stretches. When you actually throw in the Champions League and FA Cup and all the other well, competitions, and that's it. It's Always more important to do it at the end of a season yeah. when it means stuff yeah. than at the start of the season when all oh, right you advance through a couple of rounds. So yeah, what? yeah, yeah. And I, I think that you know Liverpool is it's an interesting one actually how they respond to this because they've been so consistent for so long and and a lot of the time this season they've actually not been great but the the, the mentality and, and their clear you know spirit that they've got has got them the win and, and the, the fact that they never give up basically mm. but I wonder what what that defeat at Watford will do because it was so comprehensive uh, one win in four I think you'll find Laurie <laughs> the pressure's on <laughs> How long's he got left? <laughs> Fortnite, I reckon. <laughs> I mean, you know, clearly, yeah. It makes it one win in five. If you don't win this weekend, then it's one win in six. Then yeah. you've got to start asking questions, haven't you? you you're quite right, quite right. The scrutiny will mount. Um, clearly, United would swap places with them in a heartbeat, but... Um, Matt, I think you'll find we're in still plenty of competitions, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have faith in the FA Cup, Europa League? Yeah. Who's in there that can beat us? Well, Europa League, you look at it now and you think, you know, okay... FA Cup and Europa League, who in there do you think you go, wow, I don't want to face them? Well, Europa League, you, you can see Inter at some point, can't you? United, yeah, I thought but, we were getting them in the last round. Yeah, it, was, it got close, didn't it? Them and Roma. <laughs> uh, last year, I mean, Lask, so, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm frantically Googling sort of research. As if you don't know who Lask was. Yeah. Where are they in the Bundesliga, in the Austrian Bundesliga? Uh, second. Top. Yeah, top, yeah. 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 <laughs> they beat Red Bull the other, other week, but I looked at the highlights yeah, and, that's and right, they, the Salzburg are in second. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, was a, it was quite... Do you want the stadium holds? Oh, no. So the UEFA one is different to their home one, Did right? ask you that. Okay, well, which which one are you? Their stadium. 6,000. And? What? You want the precise? Fucking right, I want the precise. 6,102. Yeah. No, I think it was 6,096. I was going to oh, check, okay. though. <laughs> like to be accurate <laughs> but obviously that's not the stadium that United will be 6,009 Six thousand. that's close uh, they'll be in a different stadium yep I don't know where that is yeah it's, it's, it's down the road I think 14,000 seated so uh, uh, yeah an atmosphere to, to fear really for United there 
You don't seem convinced. <laughs> the, have you seen what their record is, though? What, Unbelievable in, record in, that the coaches have there. No, just like the record at, at oh, the right, club. I've not seen overall. I, mean, I, I know they beat. Top of my head, it's a hell of a record, though. Well, they beat Sporting Lisbon and they beat PSV this season pretty comprehensively at home. And obviously they, well, they, but they did, they, they did lose to Club Bruges in the Champions League playoffs. So, and obviously United, you know, dismissed them pretty comprehensively. Oh, before I forget, this is brought to you by the guys at the Athletic, and you can get fifty uh, percent off your uh, subscription and a month's free trial by using the link in the description, which is. The Athletic Credit UK forward slash Housen. Um, but also, because it's sponsored by The Athletic, uh, we're doing a bit of a Q&A. So get your cues in and we'll give you the A. How about that? Um, thoughts on the goalkeeping situation mm. for next season? Conundrum. Yeah, it's a really interesting one, isn't it? I mean, you look at De Gea and that mistake at Everton just was so bad. You Seventh know, one in the last season and a half. Last season and a half, yeah, that led to a goal. I mean... You know, on the flip side, he made two brilliant saves, didn't he, in the game? Um, that that first one to Calvert Lewin really yeah, yeah, was. five minutes after he made yeah. the, the so, so, so that doesn't affect him clearly. But but you look at him and think, if if you take what what is it that, that has allowed you to sort of take that length of time? Are you, are you not fully focused? Are you kind of just pretty blasé? Because they even have been told that Calvert Lewin chases. Yeah, that's what he does. And he had so much time. It wasn't like he was under yeah, pressure. Loads of time. The pass was fine. Yeah. it made no sense. Yeah. So I don't know. I I, I wonder. Obviously, he's changed. They've changed coaches. Um, I wonder how that's working. Um, I tell you what, that lad, I don't know his name. The uh, it was from Burnley. We got him on it. Was it uh, Craig, uh, is it Mullins? God, we definitely should have. That geezer that we got. Yeah. Well, you know, how do you research when you don't know what questions are? <laughs> the uh, the geezer that we got in, um, been watching him shooting at the keepers. Uh, Fucking right. tell you what, yeah. if a Gallo goes down. <laughs> <laughs> Just think about it. Is all you I'm love say. the warm ups, don't you? Yeah. You got to watch the warm ups. Yeah. So you got to see what's going on in the warm ups. Yeah. That yeah. goalkeeper, right dig on him. Right, okay. And we're talking joints and corners and stuff as well. So right. he's making it hard for him in, in the warm ups. I've actually, and that's harder than it looks. I mean, it sounds simple, doesn't it? A goalkeeper, goalkeeping coach testing a goalkeeper with a straight shot. I've seen goalkeeping coaches have an absolute mare when they're oh, yeah. like, Just spoon it like, sorry. Left, right, I'll get it. over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I do. So Dean Henderson is definitely going to come back into the fold, isn't he? When his his loans finished at Sheffield United, I, I think Solskjaer wants to have a proper look at him. There's certain people that think he he would be good for bringing competition to De Gea because at the moment you've got Romero, who, who's a great keeper for as number two, but can't really apply proper pressure as a number one. Um, obviously Lee Grant is is you know uh, and Lee Grant. basically retired. Well, he's injured at the moment. So, but yeah, but it was a diff- it was the um, the new lad Pope, wasn't it, uh, on loan. Uh, so the ball from South End, who was on yeah. the third choice keeper at Everton at the weekend. Um, he came through the mix zone, massive smile on his face. He's, he is just loving being around United. So. Being a second and third choice goalkeeper is mad, isn't it? Because you're basically yeah. a paid cheerleader. <laughs> well, there's those, there's, there's a certain group, aren't there, of third choice goalkeepers, English goalkeepers that kept getting signed because they were British and, and they could, you know, fill up the quota. So you had like, Rob Green at, at, yeah. at, um, at Chelsea, Scott Carson at City. Richard uh, Wright for a little bit. Yeah, Richard Wright, Lee, obviously Lee Grant. Stuart Taylor made a, a bit of a career out of it, didn't he? Um, so, yeah. Oh, not playing. <laughs> yeah, basically. Imagine, like, the kids at school, what does your daddy do? Well, he's a footballer. <laughs> All right, do you go and watch him? Not really. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> there, is, there is there is definitely a value to them. Certain, certain coaches really want like a you know a, another good goalkeeper there as a you know as a as a assistant coach basically. So there is a sort of value. Yeah, I heard that's what Lee Grant sort of yeah. feels. He's a bit of a mentor and coach yeah. rather than just the third yeah. in the pecking order. And obviously, Ollie gave him that nice sort of gesture in here in Astana, sort of gave him a, gave him a game. So you know there is that at least every now and again. Uh, I guess. I mean, it's a, it's a mad role, isn't it, the third choice goalkeeper? Yeah. But United seem to have this massive stock of belting goalkeepers. People are sleeping on Joel Pereira. You know, you've you've seen some. I mean, Dean Henderson. There wasn't many people seeing their ass with him just being on loan constantly, and it's only really in the last eighteen months or so that he's really grown. But I think he's won Player of the Year three times consecutive wherever he's been. Mm. Was it Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury and then yeah. Sheffield United? Sheffield United, yeah. um, which is no mean feat, mm. and. To be a good goalkeeper that wins player of the year in a successful team is particularly hard, mm. I think. Mm. Because ju- generally, you don't get a lot of trade if your team's getting promoted and winning leagues. Mm. But he managed to get player of the year in successful teams. That that mm. shows you how good he is, I think. Mm. And that, that is more of a endorsement for his potential at United because obviously United, a lot of the time, it'll be him just having to stay switched on. He might not necessarily have to be fielding as he is at Sheffield United, shot after shot, more often than not. 
Whereas uh, for all the fact that they have, they do play really good football. Um, whereas at United, you think it's more about the staying alert, and obviously that's what De Gea sort of let himself down with, you know, with that um, th- the kick that obviously Calvert Lewin pumps in. De Gea's distribution is also a massive factor to take into account here. Yeah, I've noticed uh, United are very easily pressed out of the back, and our default option when we are pressed is to go to the keeper, and which makes it worse. I don't think it makes it better when we go to the keeper. I think it makes it worse. And prior to what we saw with um, with Everton, there's been mistakes where even if they haven't resulted in a direct goal, they've resulted in problems for us. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder yeah. if that's going to be what, something Watford that's playing was a big on, game on for his that, mind. Wasn't it? Yeah, and that also coupled with the fact that he's on the you know, best part of half a million a week. Well, that's it. Now, now he's got. You know, he, he's got the wage, he's got the seniority in the squad. He, 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 you want him to step up, you want him to be that commanding figure. Um, it was noticeable, actually, as you say, uh, there was a moment just after um, he'd done his error where um, wan had a chance to go back to him and he, he decided against it, turned the other way and kicked out for a, a throw in, basically. So clearly that then did seep out, and, you know, it'd be interesting to see. Obviously, he'll, he'll start against City, it'd be interesting to see if he starts against Derby. Um, whether Solskjaer thinks get him out there again, just sort of yeah, it, the it literally or... can go either way, couldn't it? You can see the argument for letting him have a night off, yeah. total night off, and you can see the argument for throw him in again, see what happens. Yeah, yeah. This this morning he wasn't he was he wasn't saying one way or the other. To be fair, it could could go could could, could be Romero. But... With him talking about Wamba Saka and have a bit of a niggle, do you think that's um, mind games again? Because <laughs> everyone is like, oh, I don't know when he's back. <laughs> they, they always play the next game. <laughs> now I don't think he plays against Derby anyway. Yeah. And uh, I wonder but, but if that's an opportunity. City. Yeah, I wonder if that's... Yeah, because he's absolutely pocketed Sterling. It, it, he's perfect for City, isn't it? Because, I mean, that's obviously the criticism that he's had is, are you good enough going forward in a team that's going to you know, have a lot of possession of the ball? Well, clearly against City, United are going to have you know, 30% <laughs> possession, whatever it'll be. And uh, was it in? The, it was a City game at the Etihad, wasn't it, where he, he absolutely excelled? I mean, that tackle on Sterling in the box, the way he just sort of tracks him. Like yeah, a, and that's what I think. Was it the week after he gave a penalty away, and you were like, yeah, you know what, you got to accept yeah, that. Yeah. Well, that's it. He, that's, he's obviously got that in his mind where I can do these last ditch, latch, last ditch tackles. And say then, again. La, la, it's really. Do you say it? Last ditch tackles. I'm oh, not fan. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Last ditch <laughs> tackles. There we go. Unique New York. Oh God, are you good at those tongue twisters? No, not really. Uh, okay. I tripped myself up saying something the other day. What was it? Three clean sheets. I said clean three sheets. It's close. Uh, we got what you were. Yeah, I think everyone got it. Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> uh, Ryan Fraser has six months on his deal. Do you know what? There's a lot of really good players on freeze, isn't there? It's, it's been surprising that he's got so close to his end of his contract. I mean, I guess it, you know he's been playing out for it for a while. Arsenal are the ones that I always hear with Fraser. I wonder if we've got you know United have got Dan James, so sort of quite a similar style of player. Oliver saying, uh, what players do you think might get a debut by the end of next season? So it's eighteen months oh, right, really yeah. to get into here. Uh, maybe maybe he's extremely young, but how good is he? Mengi. I'm, I am the, the driver of the Mengi mm. bandwagon. bandwagon. On his, he's outrageously good. Um, and he's a tank of a kid as well. If you found out that he was lying about his age, he was 26, you'd be like, yeah, I knew. <laughs> I knew. We, uh, we, we, we spoke to him after the game on Friday, uh, after the Youth Cup, and you know you sort of get up close and personal. And weirdly... You go, what? Well, it wasn't like what I was... stood on? It, <laughs> it actually wasn't like I was craning my neck too much. And I'm not the biggest lad, but he, he did have an aura about him and it's sort of... You know, width wise, he's had that since he was 15. Right, well, there we go. Yeah, he's a beast. Yeah, I, I love him. I it, think he's got a reckless side to him, almost a bay element to him, where you yeah. go, like, he's just gonna mull you. But I like that, mate. I, like I, that. I really like the way he was very um, articulate, you know, sort of was saying the right things, that not not the right things as in, okay, well done, checklist, you know, from a media, you know, press officer stance. He was more just what you'd like to hear from a captain of that youth team, you know, clearly taking ownership of the situation and, and their progress through to semi finals. Um, yeah, I like him as well. Uh, he also mentions Shaw Tire. He did an article yesterday on him, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, let's plug the article. Uh, yeah, so if you've gone the athletic. I'm fucking good at this presenting. That like is, me. That is, you did, we didn't even plan that, did we? Yeah, um, yeah so Shaw Tire, he signed a. Uh, he's already signed his scholarship and he signed a pre pro contract. So when he turns, <laughs> if, when he turns 17 next February, 
he's he's already sort of agreed that deal, so he's basically going to be United Pro, um, no no problem. Uh, which I guess apparently there's been a few clubs having a sniff around him, European wise. It's always the case with yeah. all these lads that are coming through. Um, Shorts, I think, has got a real big future. As we mentioned, spoke yes, was it Monday on the phone? Yeah, we had a chat on Monday, didn't we? When we were talking about Shorts. I think he had the record for youngest appearance in a youth league yeah, game. 14. <laughs> Outrageous. <laughs> Under 19 level. Yeah. yeah. And and looked good. Yeah. Looked young right. in it, to be fair, but looked good. Yeah. Um, and I think there's one there's a real it reminds me of Wayne Rooney a little bit. Yeah. Just like you go, I don't really know where you play. <laughs> oh, but right, you're dead sense. good at football. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of like it. Yeah, his physique's definitely not quite the same, is it? But I so I know what you mean. I, I, what surprised me actually against Wigan on Friday was his passing. Like I knew that he could dribble and, and you know, speed or whatever, but the passes that he was making, not only in the execution, but also the vision, I, I thought I was really impressed with. Um, Corey, are United in for a centre back or are they happy with Lindelof partnering Maguire? Mm. Seeing links to Koulibaly, but I'd like to see Up and Meccano. I wish I knew who Up and Meccano was, to be honest. You kidding? Think. Go on. Your German King Bundesliga watching. <laughs> see, I don't. Pathetic, Laurie. Is the Bundesliga any good? Oh, my God. In reality. I tell you what, it's the most fun. Okay. Uh, you can drink on the terraces. Okay. And there's loads of safe standing. Yeah. And fans own 50% of every club. Yeah, yeah. Sort of. And well, and then they can hold banners up and potentially get. That's a bit mad, isn't it? Yeah. The way they've, they've everyone seen their ass about I'd everyone say, yeah, a billionaire. Doesn't strike right with me that. The fact that you've got other things that go on in the game and, and they've, they haven't. You know, I, I accept that it's not German football. You know, the Porto lad, we, we, I think there was distressing scenes when he was you know, being tra- physically restrained by, from coming off. But there has been is- issues like that in Germany, okay, not that kind of you know, focus, but you know, then... then That's the, the monkey chanting stuff yeah, you're on about. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So, um, yeah, and then for, for them to kind of kick a ball around and, and show massive solidarity with, um, you know, a, a billionaire, billionaire owner. owner. Yeah. I mean, yeah, clearly a banner with that on, it's distasteful, ideally, yeah, let's not have it, but they, I think they were showing solidarity with the um, was it Dortmund fans that had been banned? Yes, previously Dortmund's ultras, I believe. Right, there we go. Been in trouble yeah. with them, and that, and that, yeah. So I, it just I don't know, just struck struck as odd that that would be where you draw the line in the sand. And then you've got Thomas Muller equating it to racism. I think in one of his posts, he was sort of saying, um, you know, we take a stand against all kinds of discrimination, you know, hate hate messages, and and then he, I don't know, it just just didn't quite sit right with me all that. But. Do you reckon it was a mistranslation? From, or from like an awkward translation. I may, well, I don't know. He, I think he grouped. It was, I think it was a German speaker that I saw who'd reported it and sort of saying this is, you know, I, I, I clearly he's not saying that what that banner represented was the same as you know people who chant, you know, monkey chants. But it's he's talking about it in the same conversation, and I know I, I would always separate those two things. Uh, Uber Macano was um, yeah, sorry, educate me. Yeah. One another <laughs> lad that was on trial at United. Okay, and um, who was the other lad? Um, I, I found out about this one. Yesterday, uh, did you know Aldergaard was on trial at United as a teenager? Okay, but well, there, there is more link with that, isn't there? Marshall Boot, uh, Marshall Marcel Boot went and scouted him, didn't he? So, go on. There was a trial game, uh, in which Aldergaard played in with Marcus Rashford because it's the same year, and uh, they were fucking ridiculous as a partnership um, Odegaard's got you know, an excellent touch and he's got an excellent free ball good vision as he's, he's displaying in La Liga this season and Marcus just had that knack this is when Marcus was playing left forward Marcus just had that knack of getting onto him I think Marcus scored four in a four all draw in a trial game and I think Odegaard laid at least three of them on and uh, if that was a partnership that they could resurrect I'd be very excited about it um, United chose, I believe, to go with Callum Gribbin. And he was already at the ac- yeah. academy. And I believe they chose. And hindsight's twenty twenty, and you go, oh, we chose wrong. Well, you don't know where we chose Greenwood over, say Martinelli, yeah. who was on trial as well. Or you don't know yeah. if we saw we chose uh, Angel Gomez over some other little playmaker that we might yeah. have had for five minutes. Um, but they chose, I believe. I'd have to check the ages on him, but I think it might have been Roshan. Over Upper Meccano. Right, okay. Right, right, right. Uh, I think they generally do like to go over the younger lad, but that's not always the case. We've obviously seen Pogba, mm. Fosu Mensa, Chong, mm. um, Burkhart. I think they, they, they went with him for a little bit and then he was overtaken by Greenwood, as everybody was overtaken mm. by Greenwood. Um, but that sort of scouting that we do around them 15, 16 year olds, 
something's very right mm. with the identification of those if mm. it's not even keeping hold of those. Because mm. mm. Upper Meccano, I think, made his debut like the year after right. for, for Leipzig and has been a shade under world class since. Um, I, I wouldn't be sad to see Upper Meccano. You'd be in for that. Yeah, I, 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 do, I do think that I, you know, ideally they would get another centre back in to partner Maguire. Um, but at the moment, your priorities are sort of elsewhere, aren't they? What about Jude Bellingham to Dortmund, Glory? Oh, <laughs> they're definitely in for him. Yeah, well, obviously we've seen the reports from ESPN and um, Build today. So yeah, I, I think that's on the right lines. United, we'll see. <laughs> Go on the Athletic tomorrow for more. <laughs> Laurie's got an article coming about about it tomorrow on The Athletic, which I think you should read. <laughs> Sounds interesting, and by the looks of things, doesn't want me to tell you. So I'll move on. Uh, <laughs> uh, Grealish and Madison, obviously that's coming up. What's your thoughts on that? I think we bid for both, we negotiate with both, and we get the one we can get. I think that might be the way they're looking at things as well. I mean, they've, they've done it before, haven't they, where they've had two or even three sometimes transfers where they've advanced them to even the stage of, of having a contract, you know, presented in front of players and then, you know, the line's gone cold and, okay, we figure out what's going on here, they're going for somebody else. Um, it's a delicate situation, isn't it? Personally, I think Grealish is the is the one that they, is the number one, I've, I've written that, that they would ideally like um, and I think that's a more achievable deal than the Madison one. Madison... You've got to think the start point for Madison's at least double. Yeah. What? Well, well, certainly. Well, if Villa go down, you know, you look, you're looking at. It still would be a, a significant fee, but you're looking at maybe forty, forty-five million yeah, for it. Whereas Madison, you're thinking you're probably starting ninety hundred. Looking at, at what Lest, happened with Leicester, hundred percent. You've we've seen this story so many times with Leicester. Obviously, particularly with United, you know, they, they're going to ask for big money. He's already got. I know he's in negotiation with the new contract, and I, I thought he might have been signed by now. Um, and that wouldn't necessarily preclude, you know, a, a summer transfer. You know, it doesn't have to. But, mm. um, but, uh, but yeah, Le- Leicester don't need to sell. He's already got, I think, three years left on his contract. They've got, they've got all the balls in their court. They I think he's, yeah, I think he's only renegotiating to get a big fat wage rise because I think he's on, you know, a player got signed from the Championship kind of way. I think he's on about fifty grand. Yeah, I a get week. out of bed for that. Mm. Get out of bed for that. Like, <laughs> fuck off. I'm going to pay cut. Um, Ross, I would love Madison, but I would be happy with Grealish. I think I'm with you. I think he's got a bit of an X factor about him, Grealish. That I think Madison yeah. almost might be a, a tad too nice. Uh, Corey, this is an interesting one. Uh, the Telegraph reported this today, that Harry Kane could be looking to leave Tottenham. And of course, that means United have been linked with him. I can't see anything being in that from us because of the fee. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, I mean, clearly the 150 mil is... A hell of a lot of money, um, you know. Even for United, I've written a piece about how the fact that those accounts sort of show that really, if they're going to spend big, big money, that they'd have to sell players. I mean, we all, we expect Pogba to go, obviously, don't we? Perhaps there might be a few more fringe players. Obviously, Jesse mm. Lingard is, is rumored to be on the market if, if with Raiola as his agent. But yeah, it's well, a, you don't sign Raiola to get you an extension. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, the Harry Kane one is an interesting development. I mean, Matt Law. Very good journalist who wrote that. He'll be well sourced. I, I've, you know, I, I could. I, I think there's two things at play there. I think um, in the same article he mentions Jose won't be given a lot of money for the summer. Yeah. So I wonder if Jose's gone. What can I sell? Yeah. I'll sell that. I think that from Kane's perspective, 27 years of age, one big move somewhere, mm. or if we're not having a big move somewhere, one big payday, one mm. big. Sh- stupidly fat contracts <laughs> to stay at Tottenham. Yeah. I think that's what's at play there. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. Yeah. I think £150 million seems to be the, the quoted price, and I could imagine it being that price as well. For that, I would rather see Grealish and Sancho in a United shirt yeah, that's than an, one Harry Kane. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Or, albeit United obviously do want a, a striker. But I mean, obviously we wouldn't you know pin all our hopes on Agarlo, but the way that he's actually come in and has done little bits and bobs I, I'm quite satisfied with that deal already and Mate, I'd I start him in the derby it, would you yeah. fucking right would you if Laporte is probably out so you're looking at Fernandinho or Stones yeah. what's a Gallo bring energy aggression physical pace, presence physicality mm. you just say we're pressing from the front and you're leading it go <laughs> <laughs> Watch what happens. Yeah, if he gets the ninety minutes, I don't think he does. I think he probably starts against Derby. Yeah, I, I think he'll start against Derby and then he'll come off the bench against City and, and Marshall will be starting again. But he's 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 he's, he's giving United another option, hasn't he? Um, Keith, All right, Keith. Um, who calls a baby Keith? By the way. Well, it depends how old. I mean, I know, but at what point did you ever look at a baby and go, Keith? 
There we go. Okay. Anyway. I'm, I'm called Laurie. What can I say? Yeah, uh, can United really land Grealish, Sancho, and Kane in the summer? I don't think so. No, th- that that three would be f- fantasy football territory. I That's think. when FFB are on the phone. Like, yeah, what's going? What on? are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, will Axel play right back versus Derby and Mambasaka as a knock? Um, Axel's been in and around the team, hasn't he? But not quite. Yeah, he, he played against Stoke, then he uh, on Monday night under twenty three. Apparently, he didn't play well. But then I, I don't think um, anybody at the back played particularly well. Disorganized, but so maybe it was like a, a, a different back four than was used to. I think there was a yeah, I think it was. But anyway, yeah. But he's he playing games at least. He could be on the bench games. Derby be good if they're winning. It could be a good game to bring him back onto. Yeah, Wan Bissaka out, Laird in. Um, I'd love to see Ethan giving a debut. Well, is is he? He was injured again, wasn't he, Laird? Though he, he's made of plastic. He's uh, he's fucking annoying because he's such a good yeah, player. Yeah, yeah. He's really frustrating. Player, yeah. What he's like with his injuries at the moment. Yeah, uh, dying to see him get his debut uh, in a domestic game at least. Obviously, he played in Europe, but yeah. really want to see him. Because I think the ceiling for him is unlimited. Yeah. And, you know, I, what you get from Wambasaka, I think you're a shade under that with defending ability. Um, he stays on his feet a lot more rather than go. He doesn't go to ground. Like, I mean, nobody goes to ground like Wambasaka. I don't think anyone has ever gone to ground like Wambasaka has. He? He and get, it, and nail he? it as he well. It, yeah. You'd be like, well, yeah, oh, fair play. Good tackle. <laughs> but going forward, I honestly think there's probably a right winger in there. Mm. You know, you've got a, a cross, uh, you've got a left foot, you've got a right foot. You know, like I said, he scored. 22 goals um, from left back before they moved him to right back and then they moved Brandon from right back to left I don't know what the fuck that was all about <laughs> but that was what they did um, but he scored 22 from left back and then Greenwood came in and just fucking just was like I'll take over the scoring for now if you don't mind uh, and Greenwood ended up under 16's top scorer yeah. uh, but Laird scored 22 goals from full back and was leading scorer at one point in the season it, he's outrageously good mm. and he's confident and um, the England setup had him playing in the same squad as um, I think it was Jimmy Garner, Mason, and I think there was one other in the squad as well. Can't think who that was, but they they were brilliant. And you know, obviously you're talking about the entire country here, but but Laird was playing at centre half, which I think rounded a lot of his defensive game out. Mm. You saw the leadership side of him. Mm. I think he's a, he's a fucking hell of a player. Mm. I, I'm all about even Laird getting mm. a good go at United. I think it's good good to see him signing new contracts and you know. That's obviously a faith, isn't it, from the United to, 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 of what he what he can bring. Um, any updates on the Angel Gomez situation? Yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah, we, obviously we have we've discussed this, right? <laughs> 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 Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm right in saying our info, my, my info was that the, those reports about him agreeing a new deal were not correct. It was just bollocks. Yeah, so not <laughs> correct. Six bollocks, go on, six bollocks. Well, I, I'm allowed to, a load of rubbish. I try, I try <laughs> well, supposedly, you know, it, it's difficult, isn't it, to, to know exactly these things. There's always negotiations. But here's the thing. The person I asked um, w- would know, mm. and he said no. Mm. The person you asked mm. would know mm. and said no. Mm. So it's a fucking no, right? Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't mean tomorrow he doesn't sign it. Yeah. And that's yeah. the nightmare. Yeah. That we can sit here today and says, yo, them reports that came out on Saturday, yeah. on Saturday they were bollocks. Yeah. On Friday, they might be, that might be 100% accurate. <laughs> yeah. But that's the world we live in. Isn't it, it is. It's a different, when you put your name <laughs> to something, you know, you live or die by it. Um, but as you say, we can only report what we're told. Yeah. And, as of weekend, that was nonsense. And it's, it is, yeah, it's not, it's not correct. Is I it? still think you'll sign. Yeah, it's difficult. I don't know. I, I you know, wrote a piece after the Tranmere game where he travelled, didn't he? He wasn't in the squad, and I was sort of thinking, is, I mean, is, is that a sign? You know, Oli's done some interesting things with him and Chong this season, where he's he's left them out entirely, he's brought them back in, Chong a bit more so, obviously recently. And you're thinking, oh, I thought he was off to Inter or mm. whatever. So it, I don't quite, you know, it's, it's carrot or stick, or, or is it, you know, where are we at with it? Is it, is it is a sign? It that he's... James, is it yeah. like purely squad need? Because I heard before Christmas, Chong's played his last game for United. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. So I went with that. Yeah. That's clearly bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's from. That was a well sourced, should we say? Yeah. And you're like, all right, well, that was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Managers change their minds, you know, um, situations demand that players come back into the fold. Mm. It's, it's so difficult to dictate. I mean, I, I wrote, didn't I? United were going to go for Mario Mandzukic in January and then he, he ended up going to Qatar. I mean, I still think that if it had been, if they hadn't gone to Qatar, they might have actually, you know, thought, you know, because in the well, end, like they ended said, up with a Gallo. At what point was a Gallo on a list? Yeah. It was, and people it was, were like, oh, we only got him because he's agents, the same agent as Solskjaer. Yeah, but that's how a lot of deals get done. I, that this I, it's, it is kind of one point I do want to make, actually, on Solskjaer's agent. You know, I've spoke to other people um, 
in in the game and and agents of managers do often recommend players to you know and, and, and particularly in Solskjaer's situation he clearly knew absolutely categorically that he needed another centre forward in you know as soon as Marcus was injured and who who's he going to rely on there he's you know he's got connections well, if you're the manager if you're all going to Solskjaer you've got half a dozen people that you trust implicitly yeah one's got to be your agent by the pure nature yeah. of what he does yeah so if you say is it Jim Jim Sarbacken yeah Jim, I really need a striker, mate. What do you think? And he'd be like, well, what are you thinking? Mm. And he'd be like, I just want some dickhead who's going to tear around the place. You know, Igalo's a United player, a United fan. Mm. And he'd be like, is it? <laughs> Big time. And he'd be like, let's watch a bit of tape. Yeah, yeah that's it. They will, they will have then, you know, watched stuff and, and, and sounded it out. And obviously they had the Josh King one as well going, as we talked about earlier. They have different um, transfers that they progress and, and sort of see what can come back. So... I, you know, for the cost of it, I don't mind how that shook down. No, and I, I think um, we we're talking about this um, on a fixed list, which is coming out tomorrow with me and Joe. I think it was anyway. Um, if you have, let's say you go with a Gallo, mm. obviously you take him to the end of the season. Ollie clearly wanted Haaland. You're not getting Haaland yeah. this summer now, but I think next summer he's at Dortmund to be a stepping stone. Hundred percent. Somewhere else. Yeah. If a Gallo works for you now, he's going to cost you. Essentially nothing. Why wouldn't you stay with a Gallo for another year and then bring your first choice in rather than go with your C or D choice and still spend 70, 80 million and not quite be happy with him? Mm. I think you probably just... Mm. Here's a caveat on this is that has Oli got the time for that? Has he got the time to be able to go, I'll just get my first choice in 18 months? Mm. Or does he need someone yeah. who's going to bang 30 goals in for him now? Because as much as we all buzz off a Gallo, if he scores 10 goals, I think we'll all be well happy with that. Mm. He's not going to score 30. No, no. Prove me wrong. Well, that's it. Obviously, it depends, you know, but ideally then you'd have, you know, Rashford back, wouldn't you, from injury and, you know, Marshall, you know, he keeps sort of frustrating us at times. Do you want to cover that? Because that's factually not re- correct, is it? Yeah, probably leave, probably best leave that. Okay. <laughs> I'd have answered it because I know that's not right, is it? Well, yeah. Yeah, it's not, that's not, what happened <laughs> alright we'll leave it um, I don't know why we played Timbo at right back his best games were at centre back for LVG um, I think his best game was that Spurs game he played right back um, but I've seen him play as I, I think he can be a Kante style rat in midfielder oh really You yeah, really really but he's been out for a long time yeah. he's hardly played in two and a half years oh my god what's just happened here from Amazon I don't even know what all that lot is look at the size of that one Anyway, um, someone's asking about Eduard uh, to United, like the kid from Celtic. Yeah, there, there was a rumour of this in January. Um, it's definitely one they're looking at, but at the time they said, no, not one. And obviously it didn't, didn't come to pass, but it's an interesting one, isn't it? It's, it's definitely on their radar, anyway. This is the thing, it's hard to, I mean, same thing with the Austrian League, same thing with yeah. any other league, even the Portuguese League. Yeah. You look at the, the goals and assists that we saw coming out of Bruno, and you're like... I don't know what that translates to. Now, with Bruno, it's kind of translated for it by exactly what we saw over there, actually. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> crack on. But I don't know what the Scottish League translates to. When you see, like, Scott Sinclair's essentially a legend at Celtic, yeah. he signs for Preston. Yeah. You go, ah, okay. Yeah. And yeah. actually, Joe, I don't know what he's done at Preston, but let's find out. Mm. Because if he smashed it at Preston, then... Why have I just searched Scott Preston? Um, Raul Jimenez, Prem Proven. Mm. I say, I got that's obviously a second choice then, though, isn't it? Mm. I think he's brilliant, but for the price and um, his age, you know, if, if United could get him for, I don't know, 50 million, you'd, you'd 100% do it, but would Wolves sell him for that? No chance. 50 million's a new 5 million, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, his goal, that performance at Spurs on the weekend was brilliant, you know, him. And Neto, the link with Neto and Yotta. I mean, I really like a lot of that Wolves team. Y- Yotta, Yotta's probably the one actually that I would I would love to see United if if they could do something because I just think he's got um, such a bullishness about him. He's, he's not very tall, you know. He's like what is he five foot seven or something? But he, get him off the ball, no chance. He's an absolute bulldog, and he's a he's a good good guy. I've spoken to him for an interview, and he um, he speaks very intelligently, and you can you can just sense that football is his life. Um, they don't have any. Info on Scott Sinclair's prowess 
at Celtic uh, in the league, but I do believe he scored... was up here? 62 in 167 games for Celtic. It's not a bad return. Yeah. He scored one in 10 so far at Preston. Yeah. So it's a sign, isn't it? So what the fuck is that level? <laughs> I don't know. But then Virgil is. van Dijk came from Celtic and, you know, clearly if they'd just signed him from Celtic... He, That's it. There are, and here's the, the caveat. Is there's always been good players that have played. Henrik Larsson, yeah. Gennaro Gattuso. There's always yeah. been some belting players that have yeah. gone and played in Scotland. But I don't know... To, 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 to stake your whole... You know, you, you search for a striker on, on a guy like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it would be a risk, wouldn't it? Big time. Um... Rashford, Jota, Greenwood, Marshall. Yes, I subscribe for that. I mean, <laughs> Sancho. I mean, even forgetting, just let's just ignore Martial for a second. Sancho, Greenwood, and Rashford. Yeah, we Grealish in behind. Yeah, and Gareth Southgate's <laughs> like, yeah, just let's let's have a look at that. What what does that look like? That's quite exciting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, he was there on Sunday, wasn't he? At Goodison, he had a look at. Obviously, he was there. Really, I suppose maybe for Pickford, but. Greenwood, you know, he got us. Maybe, maybe that was why he, he sh- shifted actually, because I think he was originally down for the League Cup, and then maybe he got word that Greenwood was starting. Or so, have a look at Goodison Park. Wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised. In folding a weird call up, obviously, there's rumoured to be getting a call up now on the back of actually starting a game for <laughs> City. I mean, you can laugh, but yeah. it's a fact. When you've got Madison, you've got Grealish hasn't even had a call up yet. Yeah. He's got really should be called up this this. But this how month. is how is Foden skipping this queue? Uh, Foden's been spoken about for years, hasn't he? Though I mean, he's, he's done the whole under twenty ones. He's he's been in that environment, hasn't he? Whereas Grealish was with Ireland to begin with, and then did did come you know have a bit of time with England under twenty. But he's never he's not really been around that that group. Plus, also, I mean, Grealish's performances, you know, until this season in the Championship, which I still think are more credible than. You know the bit parts that, that I guess Phil Foden would have been playing. Yeah, absolutely. I um, thought he was worthy of a call up last season. He, 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 he quite possibly was. I suppose in the circumstances, Southgate had a fe- quite a few that he felt were in the Premier League and doing okay. So stick with them, and I, I think they, they did all right for him, didn't they? But I think now, if he doesn't pick Grealish in in this next squad, you're thinking something's yeah, going wrong the there. What, what's, on, yeah, but I think I think what Grealish did and he's doing. Mm lends a lot of credence to having someone like that Calvin Phillips from Leeds called mm. up because for mm. me that yeah, okay, sort yeah. of holding midfielder role you're looking at Dyer and Henderson who you know rivalries aside I don't like either of them I don't, Henderson. Write, I don't rate him or like people him. are saying footballer of the year and he's been out of the team and Liverpool are losing yeah let's just move on from that <laughs> because that's a lot of bollocks okay. all i got to say just go and watch what he did, his last performance for England in the World Cup yeah. against Croatia when he was trying to knock pigeons off the front of that stadium <laughs> It was one of the worst performances. England struggled holding possession. Mm. And what all Henderson did, Captain Henderson did, was just oof it to no one. It was horrendous. Honestly, I would have battered him if I was in charge. Someone like Calvin Phillips, I would actually trust to be a more ball playing. I, I, I totally take your point that I think what he's doing in the Championship should hold weight in considerations because as you said with the Grealish as the precedent you could see that Grealish was going to have a season like this mm. from what he did last season in the championship so I think that is a certain yeah very valid point and, uh, and he's playing for Marcelo Bielsa so clearly he's having to take on board very tactically a astute I'm halfway through reading a Bielsa uh, tactical book at yeah. a minute it's a bit heavy but I love it yeah. there's a couple of managers that I'm kind of obsessed with at the minute Clough yeah, for yeah, loads yeah, of reasons yeah, yeah. and Bielsa yeah <laughs> Well, I'm actually rereading Fergie's autobiography potentially for, for a piece. Um, that one. Leading or that one? No, the, the earlier one. one. That one? Uh, which one is it? It's, it's earlier than that. It's it's the one. It's after, after they won the treble, basically. Uh, I think it's my, my management. It's in, in oh, bag. yeah, managing my life. Managing my life, something like that. Yeah, and he was just. But I, so I'm, I'm sort of looking back at as a reflection for this Liverpool sort of comparison as to how he managed to keep the squad happy and motivated and it sort of goes back to that sort of idea of every match needs to feel like it means something yeah. um, whereas clearly the Watford game and for those players to the didn't boil, like, we had um, Tony Shrewdwick on yeah. and he said I don't want them fit for the season yeah. from, uh, the first week of August yeah. I yeah. want them fit for August in yeah. August Yeah. and then in the season we'll get them fit Yeah. and you go oh interesting uh, and he goes all I want to be is within a couple of points they don't even care about being top at Christmas because they know that they're going to go on this run. Yeah. And when you've seen Arsenal just hair out at times, Jose Mourinho's Chelsea used to hair out. Yeah. This Liverpool team have haired out. I wonder if there's some sort of 
wisdom in what Fergie used to do in terms of no 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 don't fucking nothing's won in October and, yeah. and November. Yeah. You just got to be within striking distance, yeah. and then when it comes to March, April, that's when shit gets won. And I, I do wonder if there's some wisdom in that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think Tony Strudwick, very. I'd, I'd love to see that because he's. Um, yeah, really well thought of in the industry, I think, for what he's done at United, obviously now. Chef, Chef yeah, he did a podcast with us. Um, it was brilliant, actually. It was brilliant, and it was a good chat to him as well as Sam Bloke. He said we can actually go and do some stuff, so I'm going to get in touch with him and see. I don't know if they'll let us do a doc on Wales. Mm. I don't think we've got the pull for that, but um, I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Because we'll I be... said, can we come with like, film training? And he was like, yeah, that'd be a problem. Don't be a problem. And I'm like, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to chase up with him and, oh. uh, and get on to that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they, they could have an interesting time, I think, in the summer. Yeah, yeah, no, well, I'm, I'm doing the uh, two, doing the second and third games in the group, so Baku and then Rome, obviously Italy. So, um, yeah, so hopefully they're still in it by the time I get out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was hoping for um, for Dylan Levitt to have a, a decent back end to the season because yeah. it looked like, I mean, of the debut that I had in Astana, 100 mm. completed passes. Oh, brilliant one. I don't give a shit who you're playing. Yeah. On your debut to make 100 passes is outrageous. Yeah. And, and the, some of the style of passes was... It, they were penetrative. It yeah, wasn't yeah. Like they, just they weren't just it knocking it sideways. It. Yeah. No, it was an excellent one. So uh, I was really hoping, obviously he got ill, um, and then it, he's not really featured, but I was really hoping that he could be someone that benefits from a couple more games I around w- now. I wonder if Giggs will just try him in March, just sort of call him up and, and, and just sort of have him around the place. He's not played again yet, has he? Or has he? He played on, I think he played on Monday. Right. Some, yeah, again, I need to watch the highlights, but when I was talking to somebody, they said he, he played on Monday. So... Um, so yeah, so hopefully if he plays, he's, 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 he's going to be someone that's part of their team for ten years. Well, that's what I mean. So I, I can see the wisdom in at least having him around the squad, and then listen. If he doesn't play enough, you know, proper games until you know you get to, and I guess you know he'll play, be playing twenty threes now, won't he? Because he's, he's not gone out on loan, so that is a difficulty. But um, I don't know, just as a bit of a wild card, you know, he's, he clearly takes great care of the ball, and in this in the style that Giggs wants them to play, that that fits really well. Mate, if you're Ryan Giggs. You played your whole career with Paul Scholes, yeah, and then you've got this skinny little scally, <laughs> yeah. quiet, just, you know, yeah, same kind of vibe. He almost could be Scholes yeah, in yeah. a lot of his mannerisms yeah. and the the ball playing that he's got. I had a conversation with him when he got called up last summer. I was like, "Holy shit, you have the the Wales national team!" And he was like, "I oh, know." And I was like, "Is Bale there yet?" And he was like, <laughs> "No, nah, not yet." Because I think did he have a what was he in? I can't remember what he was. He, he came later anyway. Right. And I said, "Mate, all you've got to do is one over the top ball." Just one of them skullsy ones. You're the ones with a bit of a, a backspin on it. Yeah. I said, just dunk it in front of him. Giggs would be like, get him on a fucking plane. <laughs> and he goes, and I said, did you do it? And he was like, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that there's a, a weapon for, for Wales in there. Yeah. And obviously he was he was very close to making his debut, I think, his international debut mm. in Croatia. I know his family travelled out yeah. for him and stuff like that and he didn't get it. So he's had a bit of an unfortunate season really because he, he could be a full international and, you know, and, and have played probably a Premier League game if he hadn't got ill. Yeah. No, I, I totally think so. I th- fingers crossed. March, they've got two friendlies: uh, Austria and USA, Wales at home as well. So it's not like they've got to travel anywhere yeah. for it. So I, I'd, I'd sort like it to out, see gigs. It. Jesus. Uh, right, I'm going to leave it there. But uh, cheers for joining us, Laurie. No, nice one. Um, and we, you can check Laurie's podcast out as well on mm. um, the Athletic, which is Talk of the Devils mm. with Carl. Mm. Uh, and definitely check out his piece with Jude Bellingham tomorrow because uh, oh, he's going to drop some bombshells, maybe. <laughs> but right we'll see you in the next one make sure to subscribe and uh, join us tomorrow for the review of the game and also the fixture list is out tomorrow with me and Joe where we maybe take the piss out of Liverpool for being shit us.